Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer. This video is all about May. It's May in Review. How many books did I read? What were the genres? My top five books and two books that didn't make the top five list, but were great reads for the month. Let's start with the number of books I read in May. I read 17 books in May. What were the genres? Thriller, five books. Cozy Mystery, four books. Crime, two books. Mystery, one book. Horror, two books. Fantasy, one book. Sci-fi, two books. Again, a wide range of genres for May, with thrillers and cozy mysteries taking the top of the pile for the month. But let's talk about my top five books for May. The first book is Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. I love this book. I loved everything about it. It's grimdark fantasy. Now, grimdark fantasy won't be for everybody. It's very dark in nature. Very dark. It can have a lot of violence, a lot of negative themes. And it's a very dark book, this book. It's the first book in a series, a trilogy. It's the second book I've read by this author. The first book I read was his new book for this year. And it makes me want to read all his books. So I've gone back to his catalogue, the very start of his catalogue, and I'm going to read all the way through. I did like this book a lot. The main character was just so well done. Even though the main character is a sociopath and does some really horrible things, he's so engaging as a character. He's an anti-hero. He's the antiest anti-hero in fiction I've read. He's kind of like Batman in a way, and he even has an origin story. And so there's another guy in the book, another character, that's almost like his Joker. So it's how this kind of tale can be summed up in some ways. But as a story, it's very gripping, very engaging. It can be challenging in some parts as well. But it dragged me right into it from the word go. The main character, George, is just such an engaging character. And I can't wait to read more of this series. And I've got two other books to read in this series. I've got them both now from the library. I'm going to read them both very soon, hopefully. But I just love this series so much so far. The Girls in the Cabin by Caleb Stevens. I didn't know what to expect from this book. It's the first book from the author I've read. It's a thriller. But I enjoyed this a lot. It's very chilling, very gripping. It's a thriller that's set in a small footprint. So most of the action takes place in a farmhouse and a few sheds around this farm in a snowstorm. So the main characters are snowed in basically in this small area. But just the way this story plays out, the characters, the setting, the action, the interactions between characters, the way the story builds up and we learn different things as we go along, we learn certain secrets that drive character motivations. We learn what it means to go to an extreme to protect yourself and your loved ones. And this book asks you a question. It does ask you how far would you go? And I think that's such a gripping way to ask that question in this book. And I'm hoping that I can read more books like this in the future because it was just so gripping and engaging. It's one of those books that you're on the edge of your seat to keep reading. You want to know what happens. The only thing about this book is the conclusion let me down a little bit. I don't think the conclusion had the same atmosphere as the rest of the story, and that was a bit disappointing for me, because it was such a big build-up in this book. The conclusion just felt a bit flat and a bit deflated compared to the rest of the story. Iron Master by Patrick Tilly. It's the third book in the Amtrak Wars series. I enjoyed this book a lot. The first two books have more action, more adventure. This book, the third book, it's more about political intrigue. It's about suspense, suspense driven by characters. And we get to learn a lot more about the third culture in this whole series, this world this book is set in. This series is set in Earth, so set on Earth, but in the year almost the year 3000, I think it's about 10 years before the year 3000, and there's been a great war that decimated the whole planet, basically. We have three different cultures, three different main groups that survived. The Iron Masters are the third group we meet in this series, in this world, and I enjoyed very much being enveloped and immersed in their culture, learning all about the way they 
act in their culture, the way they act with other people, the way they treat other people, all the things about their culture were very interesting. It's a huge saga. There are about six books in the series, I think, six books in total. This is the third book. I can't wait to read the rest in the series. It's for me, it's a very interesting, engaging, and captivating series. Fire Watching by Russ Thomas. I enjoy this a lot. It's a crime mystery. The, the plot, the overall concept, was very gripping and quite chilling, actually. The main character is very engaging, as main characters go. The support characters on all sides. So support characters in the police force, support characters as suspects, and just general public characters as well. They're all engaging and intriguing in this story. They all play a part and they're all controlled very well in the plot. I enjoyed just everything about this story. It was a book that keeps you guessing. And through this book, I kept guessing about certain things. And what's gonna to happen to this character? What happened to this character in the past? And why is this character acting in this way? What does this mean? It keeps you thinking as you're reading. I do like crime and mysteries that do that. It was quite a surprising book actually. And I read the second in this series as well during May. I enjoyed the second very much for different reasons, but both books, I think, are great reads. and I can't wait to read more in this series. Witches Canyon by Jeff Marriott. This book is the second book in the Supernatural book series. It's a book series based on the Supernatural TV series. The books are not based on episodes in the TV series. They're whole new stories. But this book was so well done. The two main characters felt like the two main characters from the TV series. They were so well written in this book. The whole plot itself just felt like an episode from the TV series, even though it's not. It just felt like it was. It was so well constructed. The horror element is done very well. The investigation into the horror element was done very well. The side characters are all interesting and engaging. Everything about this book felt like it was spot on. I enjoyed it a lot. And I think books like this in this series are interesting for fans of the TV show. But if you've not seen the TV show, you can still read these books because they're engaging on their own, because they tell a whole story on their own. And you get to know enough about Sam and Dean in these books to enjoy them as characters without knowing much about the TV show. So I do recommend these books, and I can't wait to read more in this book series. Now for two books that didn't make the top five list, but were still great reads. The first is The Invited by Jennifer Bickman. I enjoyed this a lot. It's a gothic mystery, really. It's meant to be gothic horror, but for me, the mystery part of the story is a lot stronger than the horror part. So I like to think of it as a gothic mystery. It's very well written. The story plays out in a very controlled way. And I do like this type of book where the author has a lot of control in how the story plays out. And the author leads you down different paths and makes you assume things in the story that may be true or not. And it keeps you guessing in that way as well. So I enjoyed that in this story, that whole construct of the plot. The author has a lot of skill in twists and turns. That's one of the things about Jennifer McMahon I like a lot, is these twists and turns and surprises come at you out of nowhere sometimes. Sometimes you can see them building up, and they're still very powerful, even though you can see them building up. But when they're surprising, they're extra powerful. And sometimes after those twists and turns, your assumptions are just sorely tested and cast aside because you learn so many different things about events and characters in the story that you didn't know before. But the good thing about Jennifer McMahon as well, and also in this book, is that things don't come out of nowhere. There's always links to certain things in the book itself. There may be links to something that you learn about in a further chapter, because in her books, she likes to split into different storylines between past and present a lot. And every book I've read from Jennifer McMahon so far does that. Not my favorite way of storytelling, but it seems to work in her books. And sometimes the things you learn jump around a bit in the storylines between the past and present. But they are engaging stories. Her characters are always engaging. This one is very suspenseful. And that mystery that has to be solved, I thought that was very well done. I do recommend this book a lot. The Women of Baker Street by Michelle Birkby. It's a cozy mystery series. It's book two in the series. 
The two main characters are taken from the original Sherlock Holmes series. They are Mrs. Hudson, who's the landlady where Holmes lives, and also Mrs. Watson, who's married to Watson. These two characters are explored very well in this series, and that's what drew me to this series in the first place. I want to know how these two characters would be expanded and explored. And the author's done such a great job with these two characters. It's set in historical times. The two characters match the times, but they're also very strong characters, very clever, very intuitive, very courageous and brave characters. And one of the strengths of these characters in this series is the fact that men in this world, in this time period, they don't think women can do anything, basically. And so, because they're underestimated so much, these two women can investigate things and solve things and move around the city without being closely monitored. You know, people are... They're, they don't put up their guard around these characters because they think that women can't do anything. So I like that in this series. I like the fact that these two women are stronger and, and more capable than all these men think they are. And it's one of the things I think will attract a lot of readers to these books. These books were written a few years ago. I'm still waiting for book three in this series to come out. I'm hoping there will be a third book. It seems like these two books are being given a bit of life again. They've been renamed and they've been given a publication in America. I'm hoping that draws more interest to the series for the author. Then the author can release book three in the series. So I think these two characters deserve more books. These two characters are written so well and this book, book two, even the mystery was stronger than book one. And that's why I enjoyed book two more than book one in the series. But I enjoy this series very much. I do recommend it. If you can find this series, give it a go. So there you have my brief May in review. 17 books in total, a whole range of genres. Again, top five books and two other books that just didn't make the top five. I have to admit, though, that in May, there weren't as many great books. April, there were so many books that I really enjoyed and rated five stars, but in May, that wasn't the case. I'm hoping June opens up more books for five star ratings. I'm looking forward to what I read in June. I can't tell you what that's going to be because I don't decide, you know, in, in advance usually what I want to read, but things chop and change sometimes in my TBR pile. I'm hoping to mix it up again with different genres because I do like to read widely in genre. I don't like to box myself in to one genre for a whole period. That's not how I do things when I read. But anyway, look forward to June and the rest of the year for reading. On my channel, I review many books from all different genres. Check out my channel and subscribe. On the screen now is a link to a video for another book I'm sure you'll enjoy.